So, what are you trying to say? I am trying to say it's over. O V E R. Over. I am so sorry you had to see that, John. Oh, man. Tom, come in here. What's up? Diane dumped Jerry. Oh, man. Right in front of me. Oh, my God, John. Uh, <laughs> hey, guys, come in here a minute. Hey, what's going on? Diane dumped Jerry. <gasps> right in front of John. <gasps> you poor thing. <laughs> oh, man, that's a bitch. For you, John. Come on, John. <laughs> we'll all go buy you something to drink. It'll help take the edge off. Man, I could use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Jerry, we're going to the bar. See you later. <laughs> Guys, return my keys. I'll be right back. Oh man, Tom, come in here. <laughs> What's up? Jerry killed himself. Oh man, John, are you are you okay? Oh, like, they were right in front of me. Oh God, John, they, guys, come in here a second. <laughs> Jerry killed himself <gasps> right in front of John. <gasps> you poor, poor <laughs> man. Oh man, that sucks. For you, John. I should never have broken up with Jerry in front of you. How could you do this to John? <laughs> Come on, everyone. Group hug. Uh, you guys ready to go? Yeah. Yeah, let me get the keys. Oh. oh, man. Tom. What's up? Look at my dresser. Oh, man. I didn't see my keys. Oh, my God, John. <laughs> You know, a lot of people come up to us after, after the show and ask us what it's really like to be in Brand X. So we created a scene that takes you behind the scenes of a real live Brand X rehearsal. No, no, no. No, fuck you. You're always doing this. Hey, come on. No, fuck her. She's... I'm sick of it. What? What the fuck is your problem? Oh, fucking never mind. No, no. I want to hear what you have to say. Where the hell's our waitress? <laughs> Shut up, okay? No, fuck you, let him talk. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. No, fuck both you guys. <laughs> what the fuck is your problem? Yeah, jeez. Fuck you. <laughs> well, we're getting along pretty well for a Thursday night. Oh, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck you. Okay. Did anyone call Doug? No, he said he'd meet us here. You told him Thursday, right? Yeah, I told him Thursday. Jeez. Where the fuck is our waitress? Jesus Christ. Jesus, man, she's swamped. She's a good waitress. You should see her at lunch. <laughs> no, seriously, man. Where the fuck is Doug? He said he was going to meet us here. Are you fucking deaf? Are you sure he's taking his sweet fucking time? Oh, there's our waitress. Hey! Oh, fuck! Did you hear about that drive-by in South City? Yeah. A friend of mine got killed. Shit. I'm sorry, man. Nah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Look, why don't you just go fuck yourself, all right? <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. 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 Fuck me? Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Oh. Fuck. You. <laughs> hey guys. Fuck you! <laughs> wow, you're getting along pretty well for a Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pricks. <laughs> Tonight we're the Brand X Comedy Troupe, and we have a great show planned for you. We're going to do some sketch comedy and some improv comedy, and when we do the improvised scenes, we're going to come to you, the studio audience, for suggestions of people, places, relationships, all kinds of stuff like that. Have a good time. Tip your waitress. 
Everybody always says tip your waitress. And uh, <laughs> thanks for coming out to the Brand X show. Thanks. <laughs> That's the way to go, Doogie. You sound like an angel. You're, you and your brother are for sure to take the Akron City Championship with so and scale like that. You think so, Pa? You really think we can do it? Sure you can, son. <laughs> but with your skill in silk and taffeta, and your brother's gift with needle and beaver pelts, <laughs> the two of you are gonna take this city by storm. I'm worried though, Pa. I'm worried about Rossi and that woman. Don't even say her name, boy. She's an evil blight on this family. Oh, Rossi, how good to see you. My God, boy. I told you I never wanted to see that woman's face again. But I love her, Pa, and she loves me. And I want something better for him than just sewing. Better than sewing? There's nothing better than sewing. Yes, there is, Doogie. What? Pa, I decided to go back to Scotland. I'm going to toss the caber. Never! You know I forbid you boys ever to even pick up a caber as long as I live. This is your doing, girly girl. Yes! I want him to toss the caber. And you would too if you could see him. He tosses the caber like a god. Stripped to the waist, covered in sweat, his breath hot with haggis, the caber in his hands like a huge... What do you know of the caber? What do you know of how it can destroy a man's dreams and besmirch a family's name? Rossi, I brought you two boys here to Akron so you'd be free of the weight of the caber that crushed my life. But Pa I was born to toss the caber. I know it now. Why, when I hold the caber in my hands, I, I feel like a real man. But Ross, what about sewing? It's the most manly thing you can do. Pa says all real men sew. No, Dougie. I'm sorry. They don't. <laughs> I lied to you about Flip Wilson. <sighs> <laughs> then it's not manly? No, Dougie. Not even in the tiniest bit. So, Rick Edlund? Not a day in his life, boy. <laughs> oh, man. I'm fooked. Uh, <laughs> that's right, Doogie. He lied to us all these years. Come on, Pa. Tell us why you don't want us to toss the caber. Come on, say it. Say it, old man. Oh, there, Elsie. I'll tell you the truth. Your mother didn't die of Dorchelm disease like I told you. <laughs> <laughs> she was crushed by a caber. A caber I tossed in the first round of the Edinburgh Open. Ever since then, I've carried the shame of that day in my heart. I tried to protect you two, but I see now that the caber is in your blood. Gosh, Paul, I, I never knew. I know that, Rossi. It was a secret. <laughs> <laughs> but now that it's out, maybe you can go back and clear the family name. Yeah! Here's boy, here's the family caber. It's the caber that killed your ma. It killed my ma before her. And it's always been in our family as far back as 10 generations. Throw it proud, boy. I will, Pa. I'll throw it for you, and for Doogie, and for all of Akron. And for me. Shut up, get in the car. <laughs> Good luck here, Rossi. And Rossi, try not to kill your woman. <laughs> All right, it's time for the first improvised scene we're going to do tonight. It's called Emotional Option, and it's all based on emotions. And what we're going to do is take Wendy and Jamie, hello, and uh, they're going to start a scene based on a suggestion that you give them, and then what I'll do is yell freeze at some point, come out, stop the scene, and I'll come to you for a suggestion of an emotion, happy, sad, angry, whatever it happens to be. And they'll, uh, what? No. Oh. And they'll, uh, giddy up. So he's like, say something? <laughs> And then uh, they'll, they'll continue the scene in that emotion, and we'll do that just for like 90 minutes, and it's really good. <laughs> so, to start out, we need to get a service-oriented relationship that these two can use. Something taxi. like a doctor... What? Taxi. Taxi. Taxi driver. Taxi. Taxi driver and a... Usually a... a fair? Taxi. Giddy up. All right. Giddy up. Giddy up. Taxi driver and a... Librarian. Taxi. Taxi. E-E-E. E -E. <laughs> I really appreciate you taking me, you know, the extra mile and not charging me. That's really great. Sure, just don't touch me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just, you know, a kind gesture. Thanks. Big pat on the back to you. 
Don't touch me. <laughs> Way to go! <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Don't talk to me. <laughs> Green acres. <laughs> you know the words. Come on, sing along. You don't sing? I don't sing. I don't talk. I don't get touched. <laughs> I drive a taxi. That's what I do. Free. <laughs> okay, now let's get into motion and they can continue this. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I knew if it was going to be this big of an ordeal for you, I would have just grabbed another cab. I don't take shit from stupid patrons. I'm getting out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm staying in. Well, I've got the keys. Well, so to go somewhere, you have to... Oh, I'll wait. I didn't say wait. <laughs> I didn't say anything yet. You cut me off. Yeah. Don't cut me off. <laughs> I can't hear you. You hear me now? I broke my window. Are you happy? My own window. All right, another emotion. Hysterical. Oh my God! How about hysterical? I'm not excited. Okay. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Get in the car! Get in the car! Oh, 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 Brave! How about loving? I don't know if this is also blood or the moonlight, but I think I love you. <laughs> Can I touch you now? Oh, how I long to touch you. In the blood. Normally I'd say no, but somehow it just feels right. Oh. This sweet, sweet blood. Oh. Thank you for letting me touch you and lick your blood. Breathe. All right, one final emotion. Disgust. Ooh, that's a good Thank you <laughs> for pushing my hand to your clammy ass chest. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, and the blood stains are going to come out really Oh, gee, it wasn't here like you do it out at 3 in the morning anyway, you a cab. Gee, you're gonna be hard, would you? <laughs> you're gonna be a cheap little whore, would you? I am so disgusted that you would even insinuate that about me. I'm out just having a good little time at a party, and no, not to deal with people like you, three o'clock in the morning. Ugh. No, go ahead and drive away, because I'll just get my own damn cab. I don't care. I'm out of gas! <laughs> Freeze! Thank you! <laughs> Grown-ups keep the delicious things they don't want you to drink. <laughs> Should I drink it? I would. Okay. I have no pigment! No pigment! <laughs> That's why they call me Mr. Bad Example.
Look, Skeech, I'm not asking you to understand. Can't you just support my decision on this? You're my manager, for Pete's sake. I need you behind me. I can't do it. Come on, Dale. The Yankees want you. The Dodgers want you. Why even the St. Louis Browns want you? Why, Dale? Why do you want to play in the Negro Leagues? <laughs> That's not an easy question to answer, Skeech. I, I guess it's because I've got Negro ball running through, running through my veins. But, Dale, the Negro teams are the only ones who don't want you. Every time I call, they think it's some sort of joke. Then they call my mother names and hang up on me. It's kind of funny, but it kind of hurts. Well, I'm sorry about that, Skeech. Dale, think of your family. You can't support them on a Negro team's salary when they can barely afford the shoes they play in, those poor souls. Don't try to be funny, Skeech. My mind's made, my mind's made up. It's Negro ball for Dale Reinhardt. Skeech, did you talk him out of it yet? I'm sorry, Sandra. I can't do it. His mind is made up. Well, Dale, I guess when you're ready to throw away your career, our life, the whole shebang. Shebang! We'll make it somehow, Sandra. The most important thing is I follow my heart. I've got to do what's right for me. You? What about me? Sandra! I have hopes and dreams, too. I want a life, a real life, a, a home and a family. And we almost have that. And now you have to go and throw it away on those, those Negroes! <laughs> Sandra, one of these days, and maybe not too far in the future, I ever see great changes taking place across this land of ours. Why, I ever see white men, just like me, playing on every Negro team in the nation. <laughs> <laughs> Why, I could play on the same team as Josh Gibson, or Satchel Paige, or Sweet Ankles Brown. But he's a blues singer. Think of it, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> white men and Negroes playing baseball side by side can make a better world, could end hatred. Isn't that worth one family sacrifices? Well, isn't it? Well, I guess I, I never thought of it that way. Can you forgive me for being so selfish? That a girl. Now give your old Negro League husband a hug. <laughs> Darn it, Dale. You're right. I'll call those Negro League managers back, and this time I won't take no for an answer. I don't care what they say about my mother. <laughs> my mom is so. <laughs> oh. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you know something, you two? Together we're going to change the face of, of this world. I can feel it. Mr. Skeech, Mr. Skeech, did you hear the news? Oh, come on, spit it out, boy. Jackie Robinson is the first Negro to play in the major leagues. Wow, he's going to change the world. Well, fuck. Uh, yeah, Dave. How'd your date go with that really cute girl? Oh, uh, you know what? She said she just wanted to be friends. Don't you hate that? Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, so you still have her phone number, don't you? Uh, yeah, you're gonna call her and patch things up for me? Right. <laughs> <laughs> great that we've been friends all these years and we never had a fight or an argument or anything like that? Isn't that great? Shut up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. People of Littleville, gather round, gather round, good people of Littleville, gather round, gather round, gather round, good folks, gather round, good folks of Littleville. Now, don't be concerned, I won't take up too much of your time. I know you're busy being Bill the barber, Tina the teacher, Carl the carpenter, and Paula the prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> he knows our names. Give them. Now, don't be shocked. In the 45 minutes since my train derailed, I've gotten to know you people. Why, Bill, you gave me a fine, close shave. And Tina, you taught me how to read. Sound it out. Good advice. Carl, you built this handsome sign for me. And Paula, 
My sweet, sweet pun. <laughs> Why, I came in your mouth not 15 <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> ah, sweet release. Yes, I know this wonderful town, and I know you wonderful people. And I know you're searching for something. Something good for what ails you. An honest-to-goodness cure-all that will not only stop your headaches, Tina, but ease your painful arthritis, Bill. Why, it'll not only silence those voices in your head, Carl, <laughs> but help you with your problems of self-esteem, Paula. It won't help me. Nothing can. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, Paula. Just as I know some of you think I'm a shyster, a flim-flam man, a lying, red-headed bastard. But I think if you'll take a closer look, you'll see it just isn't true. Uh, He's right. We'll see. And you'll see that I have something that can help all you good little villains. I have here a miraculous, scientifically guaranteed restorative. Why, the contents of this little bottle can cure every syndrome known to mankind, from agoraphobia to xenophobia, from constipation to consternation, and everything under the sun and the moon to the whole rich, chocolatey, milky way. And probably between you and me, it makes a fine lubricant, but you already knew that. <laughs> I bet you're wondering what kind of a marketable name we give this fine product. Well, it's not called Paul or Peter Tom or Gladys Knight in the Pits. No! It's Dr. Johnny Perkins' pain easing, brain teasing, corrective distilled directly from the healing waters of beautiful Lake Remedy. Oh, Lake, Lake Remedy. Remedy. Oh. Kids got killed. Yeah. <laughs> now, friend, if you were to pay retail in a town like Big Bill, you could expect to pay $18.50 for this little bottle of miracles. He said, Big Bill, get him! But I couldn't do that to you fine folks because you've been so awful good to me. To show you how much I appreciate the good people of Little Bill, <coughs> I'm going to dig into my own pocket. You see, it cost me $2 a bottle to pack all my special ingredients into this marvelous panacea. And believe me, I packed this panacea with panache for the express purpose of pandering it to you people. Let's try saying that 10 times real fast. If you can, I'll give it to you for free, Carl. Ah. Huh? I'm going to give it away to you people for the low, low price of one dollar. Well, there you have it. I know what you want, and I've got what you need. So, who's going to be the first to take advantage of this greatest wonder of modern medicaments? Who's going to be the first? Step right up. No shoving, please. Did I mention it's scientifically guaranteed? We can't buy it yet. Good woman, why not? We have to ask our God. God, why, God's great hand was... Oh, God. great God, we are humble before you. Please appear before us and answer our question. <laughs> it is I, God. <laughs> what is your question, good people of Littleville? Should we trust a good man with the bottle? No! He's a lying, red-headed bastard! Oh I told you. That's good people. Your God is nothing more than a, a puppet. And not a very well-constructed one at that. <laughs> like, this is nothing more than a wool sock with eyes and a mouth drawn on it. He's got our God. Get him! Good people. Be reasonable. Hear me out. <laughs> Why, this God is nothing more than one of your own townspeople deceiving you, pulling this wool sock over your eyes. It can be made to say whatever you want to hear. This is your shyster, this is your flim-flam man, and yes, your lying, red-headed bastard, this sock you dare call God. Your God is a puppet. Your God is a puppet. Your God is a puppet! Well, duh. <laughs> <laughs> powdered sugar as I suspected. Nope. That's what they call heroin. Horse. Junk. Should I use it? Yes, Ambrose. And don't forget to tie off. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm back in the womb. I'm safe. I'm safe. <laughs> Sweet. 
Sweet dreams, Ambrose. Sweet dreams. <laughs> cherries and the bananas. Yes, and they're delicious, and I moved out. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, this is just great. Mayonnaise, please? <laughs> yes, I miss someone else. <laughs> well, that's it. Slather it with mayonnaise. Another man's mayonnaise. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> Bedroom. No. <laughs> 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 Everybody went with it. <laughs> Church. Airplane. Church. You guys are in an airplane. <laughs> airplane? Sure, I have an airplane ride. Okay. <laughs> All you ever got stuck tight that you can play with you, I'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> that just sucks. So. I hope things are going well with Carlos. <laughs> Actually, they are. It reminds me. He bent you a sandwich. <laughs> Enjoy your sandwich. <laughs> 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 Why don't you go back to the circus, you sword swallowing freak? <laughs> you still remember my tattoo, I see. <laughs> yes, I remember it. The one that I paid for, Johnny. One that you paid for, Johnny. <laughs> no more riddles, Johnny. <laughs> I think I should be saying the same thing to you. Let's just land this plane and get on with our lives. Oh, it's time to land. <laughs> Take off the autopilot. <laughs> <coughs> All right. See the light over there? That's Carlos's house. <laughs> All right. What are you doing? We're going to San Antonio. 
Good. Where Carlos is from. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> Any one but fun location where you would like to see these crazy kids at? PTA meeting. PTA meeting. Rock on, rock. <laughs> How are you ready to appear with you? I'll never know. Well, our son. <laughs> it's your weekend, but I still had to come to the PTA meeting. Yes, I know. Because I care about him. Do you, John? Do you care about him? Of course I do. He's my son. Our, never mind. Why do you give that train set two cars long? <laughs> <laughs> Carlos has said 24 cars, Johnny. <laughs> Carlos, Carlos, Carlos. I'm sick and tired of hearing about Carlos. Him and his long kill bosses and other things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a man of many other things, Johnny. Oh, he's got other things at the wazoo. <laughs> He is scat munching freak. Oh. Well, you said out the wazoo. I didn't hear that, John. All right. Well, looks like you just both volunteered for the cookies. <laughs> yes, just like the old days. I'll bake them. You'll eat them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never even get to slice the damn things up. I put the whole roll into the oven. <laughs> Carlos, Carlos picked some long johns for the sale. Would you like one? Yes. I'll take them home to Henry. 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 <laughs> you don't say. Yeah, I knew I'd strike a nerve with you. Oh, Henry. Uh, <laughs> how ironic you'd go up with him. <laughs> His nickname is Henry. That was an unusual twist. <laughs> Henry. His nickname is Henry. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, fuck you. you. You've talked over me your entire fucking life, and I'm sick of it. And I'm sorry, Mr. Principal. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to Edgar. Daddy's just very upset. <laughs> Daddy has made me very upset. Daddy has made me very upset. <laughs> now, look at his face. <laughs> You're holding up by his head. <laughs> What do you want from me? Do you want them? Here, have them! Oh my god! We're not throwing babies out. Hammer and Hank. He didn't want me to use Hammer and Hank. I'm guessing. <laughs> Say, Johnson, you like those Spice Girls? No, Dick. Neither do I. They're too funky. No, Dick, I'm not talking about the Spice Girls. I'm talking about me. I'm finished. What are you talking about, Johnson? I lost one in there today, Dick. A twat died on me. Right on the table. <laughs> lost a twat. <laughs> well, Johnson, my heart goes out to you. Better luck next time, old boy. <laughs> Dick, don't you understand? It was me. I. I killed that twat. I'm the chief twat surgeon here. I'm not allowed to make mistakes. Women come to me with sick twats from all over the world. <laughs> and I'm supposed to heal those twats. Not kill them. Not watch them die. Johnson, I uh, don't know what to... You never watched a twat die, have you, Dick? They don't go like any other body part, softly into the night. No, they twist and sputter, 
gag and torque and, 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 and twist. You already said twist. Oh, I was such a fool to think I could play God with every single twat I touched. <laughs> Don't you see? Don't you see now, Dick? I was never meant to touch a twat. It was never in the cards for me. I should have been an ear, nose, and throat man like my father. Look, Johnson, you can't expect to save every single twat that comes down the pike. Who do you think you are, some sort of god of all twat gods? <laughs> Sometimes a twat just dies and there's nothing you can do about it. There he is. I just had to see his face one last time. I had to look into the eyes of the man, no, the monster, who killed my wife's twat. <laughs> Mr. Willie, you'll have to wait. Here. Wait? <laughs> All I've been doing is waiting. <clears throat> waiting and hoping. Hope that you, Dr. Johnson, gave me. How am I going to tell my wife about how I stood helplessly by as I watched her twat, twist, gag, contort, sputter, and twist? You already said twist. Sorry. Oh, wait till Bobby's classmates hear about this. Oh, how they'll tease him about his twatless mother. <laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Johnson. Thank you for making things really, really bad. <laughs> well, there you have it, Dick. How many other ways does it have to be played out? What other testimonials do you need? Sure, Johnson, go ahead. Feel sorry for yourself. Fine. Look, let me give you the facts. Fact! You're the best twat surgeon this hospital's ever had. Fact! Your book, the Twat Owner's Manual <laughs> is required reading in every girl's health class in the country. Of course, for some reason, the boys like reading it too. <laughs> and finally, fact! During your speech at my son's bar mitzvah, you told a crowd of 200 that your hands feel more comfortable in a twat than they do in your own pockets. <laughs> I did say that, Dick, didn't I? <laughs> yes, Johnson, you did. No one at that bar mitzvah was ever going to forget it. <laughs> I know I never have. I want you to look at something, Johnson. No, I, I can't. Yes. The Book of Twats. Look at them all. The Twats you saved. Hundreds and hundreds of twats that went on to lead happy and successful lives because of your skilled hands. You look at all those twats and then tell me you're washed up. Look me in the face and tell me you're not the best twat surgeon who ever walked his fingers through a bushy buff. <laughs> I, I... What? What? I can't. Why? Because you're right. I am the best at what I do. Sure, I may have a setback now and again, but for all intents and purposes, every twat I touch turns to gold. That's right, Johnson. You're the number one twat man in this country. Code pink, code pink. Emergency twat situation. Dr. Johnson, report to the twat trauma ward immediately. Code pink, code pink. You'll have to excuse me now, Dick. Out there, there's a twat that needs me to live. And these two hands might be its only hope for survival. I must go. Lucky, lucky bastard. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. No, no, no. Okay. You try again. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So, you wussies ready for some dodgeball? Yeah, wussies. I, I guess so. Oh, you hear that, Bates? The fourth grade wussies think they can beat us sixth graders with dodgeball and get to go on the field trip to the candy factory. Yeah, wussies. See you on the field of battle, wussies. Don't you mean the gym? Shut up! <laughs> this sucks. We're gonna get killed. I wish we were as big as those sixth graders. Who is he that wishes that? <laughs> my classmate Westmoreland? No, my best pal. If we're going to get our butts kicked, and we all are small enough to get our butts kicked, <laughs> then the fourth grade shall lose. But if we win, the smaller the kid, the greater the glory. So I put pray not that you would wish we would grow another inch. By God, I don't care about field trips. Nor do I care about candy. It doesn't upset me if all the world's chocolate is free. I do not care about such trivial things. 
But if I were to get a detention for wanting glory, then I am the most detained man alive. So if one of you has no stomach to dodge the ball, let him depart. Your hall pass shall be made, and a sack lunch for your journey shall be given. We will not get our butts kicked in that guy's company that would not get his butt kicked with us. This day is called the Feast of Apple Chris. <laughs> Those who try this day <laughs> and take the school bus home shall stand proudly when this day returns to be roused by the smell of apple crisp. <laughs> Those who survive this day and see the fifth grade shall weekly in the vigil feast their classmates and say, tomorrow is apple crisp. Then they shall roll up their pants and show their strawberries and say, these wounds I had on apple crisp day. <laughs> <laughs> then our names shall be as familiar as Michael Jordan and Deion Sanders, Harry the Bleeder, Brendan the Picker, Salisbury and Stinky, and you, McMorris the Bedwetter. <laughs> to raise a mother in this and do remember it. This story we shall tell our little brothers, and Apple Crisp shall never go by from this day until the end of the semester. Be we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers and sisters. For those today that skim their knee at me shall be my brother and sister, be they covered with goopies, this day shall ease their pain. And classmates inside now in math, shall the danger burn their textbooks if they were not here, and hold the report cards cheap, while any speaks, that dodge the ball with us on Apple Crisp Day! Yeah, let's get him! Woo! Uh, I'm out! <laughs> <laughs> David Dan. <Dan. coughs> hey, hey, Dave. Yeah, Dan. Uh, no, anything is great. Marshmallow surprises in every box of Lucky Charms? Uh, no, no, it's the way the, that you and I are friends. You know, I mean, women and come will go out of, out of our lives. We'll leave our jobs and get new ones. But the one constant in our lives is friends. I mean, we're friends and we'll always be friends. Jesus, and... did you get dumped again? Yeah, I got fired too. But you can't hang around me. Come on. No. Come on. No. Oh, come on. No. <laughs> David Dan. Hey, Dave. Yeah, Dan. Where do you suppose we'll be in 10 years? Well, I'll be on the beach in Mexico with 10 million in stolen funds and living under the assumed identity of a man I kill. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> yeah, funny. By the way, how do you spell your middle name? <laughs> ring, damn it, ring! Why won't you ring? Why don't you try calling people super tricks? Superheroes don't call people Bumble Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, I put that ad in the Yellow Pages. When trouble comes a calling, call Super Tricks. Oh, yeah. It was all the rage. They picked it up on the AP wire. We went national. And we still don't have one damn phone call. Maybe we should get a website. A what? Never mind. <laughs> I've got an idea. I'll use my superpowers to make the phone ring. Yeah. Uh. Alakazam, Alakazoo, Muhammad Ali, Alibaba, shit! <laughs> Super tricks. Yes. Well, that's interesting. Mm hmm. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Well? Wrong number. Oh. <laughs> Did they say, oh wow, Super tricks? Wrong number. You need to get some kind of an arch enemy supervillain. Well, I had one. In fact, I had two. College boy and his sidekick, the freshman. But then you had to go and stab him to death with that stinger of yours. <laughs> don't worry, Super Tricks, it's only a mildly painful thing. Sting. <laughs> <laughs> so angry I can't even talk. Next thing you know, they're hanging off your ass like a freaking shish kebab. <laughs>
<laughs> well, they thought they were so smart. Well, they were smart. Just not very athletic. <laughs> not everybody can get into an Ivy League school, Super Tricks. We can't go around killing people just because they're smarter than you. Otherwise, there'd be no one left, good or evil. Very funny, Super Tricks. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but you're shitting my comic book deal away. Tricks. Hello? Yes, this is Bumble Boy. It's just a mildly painful sting. Yeah, really. Yes? Well, I, uh, I suppose I could do that. What time should I be there? Ah, all right, see you then. Buzz, buzz. <laughs> Well, well, well. Who is that? I'll be chopping fire firewood for the Petersons later this afternoon. You're freelancing now? A bee's got to eat, Super Tricks. Don't worry. Things will get better. Hello? So, I mean, Super Tricks. <laughs> I told you no. Who was that? It was AT&T. They wanted to change our service. That's the third time they've called this month. Someone needs to stop this menace. They're a threat to the public. <laughs> this is a job for Super Tricks and Bumble Boy. Let's fuck him up. <laughs> what the hell is that? It's my new delayed catchphrase. <laughs> That's the catchphrase you've been bragging about for six weeks? Yes. <laughs> well, what should I say? We'll just say what you said before. All right. Let's fuck him up! <laughs> Ditto! <laughs> All right, the next improv scene we're going to perform for you is called Playbook. Are you kind of someone, 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 someone? Play. 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 In the middle play, who's ready to pin your wolf? Woo! I am, I am. <laughs> okay, we're going to give this play to Liz, and she will read from the play. Dave has to react to it and try to make the scene make sense. <laughs> he never can do it. <laughs> he embarrasses himself, he embarrasses his eyes. It's very fun. <laughs> okay. Now we also need another service-oriented relationship like Dr. Patient, Lawyer, Client, anything but prostitute, John, because it hits too close to home. <laughs> Sorry, John. For Dave. <laughs> Bus, Bus driver. Postal worker. Bus driver? Wait, we had postal cab driver. Let's take postal worker. Postal worker and... Policeman. <laughs> <Dog. laughs> Policeman. <laughs> postal worker and dog. And <laughs> let's take postal worker and... Uh, dog walker. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. It's not service oriented unless you're selling cookies, and I guess it would be. But it's postal worker and postal customer. Okay. We need a page we need a number. On a page number, too. The auto page number. 69. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, sure. I'm going to be a personal screwing machine. <laughs> Did you call 81? Dear, you mustn't. You mustn't. Oh. I'm sorry, honey. Look, nobody else is here. Could you call 81? I'm sorry, all right. All right, I'll wait. <laughs> well, all right. Where's your son? My son went home three hours ago. <laughs> now, I have one teeny tiny little letter I have to mail, but I need insurance for it. What? Insurance for it. When it, where is your son coming home? <coughs> he went home. Oh. Yes, he went home. He didn't want to stay here all day. Never mind. All right. All right. Well, it's it's thirty two cents, and then it's what for insurance? That's what I don't know. I said never mind. I'm sorry, okay. I brought it up. Never mind. Him up, not it. You brought him up. I didn't bring him up. You asked me where he was. I told you he went home. I have got to mail this letter. When's the little bugger going to appear, huh? I, let me use your telephone. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Jackie, come back to the post office. <laughs> Just forget it. Come back. Come back! Uh, All right, he's on the way back. Are you happy? When's the little bugger coming home? 
I woke him up from my nap. What's he coming home? I just got him from home. <laughs> Since you had the bad taste to bring the matter up in the first place, when is the little bummer coming home? Four o'clock. <laughs> George talks disparagingly about the little bugger because, well, because he has problems. George got fired three weeks ago. <laughs> the first time I tried to come in and mail this tiny little letter. What's the matter with you people? What problems has the little bugger got? Well, for one thing, he runs back and forth to the post office. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> the little bugger. Stop calling him that. You, you've got problems. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of anything more ridiculous in my life. You mind if I just eat my lunch while I'm waiting? <laughs> my God, you're wicked. Yes, I suppose so. Look at me, trying to mail this evil, evil letter. <laughs> <laughs> my mayonnaise has gone bad. I'm not sure that this is a subject for me. Look. There's 50 bucks. <laughs> now mail my letter. <laughs> There are very few things in this world that I am sure of. National boundaries, the level of the ocean, political allegiances, practical morality. None of these I would shake my stick on anymore. Civil service test is harder than I thought. That's <laughs> <laughs> playbook. <laughs> Are you sure he's coming? Of course. I talked with him earlier and I told him it was urgent that I meet with him about this trip. Yeah, well, we've been here since 10 o'clock and now it's 3 in the morning. Well, he should be home soon. The, the bars are closing. Oh, wait a second. There's a cab. Yeah, okay. It's him. It's him. Okay, hi. He's coming. Wait a second. Banditos! Oh my god, Jay, you, you shot my fiance! I still got you it. You shot me! You shot me right in the fucking leg! Bert? What the hell are you blubbering about? In WWF2, my left leg was blown up in the knee. Well, I shoved that leg into my knapsack and hopped 35 miles back to General MacArthur himself. Pulled out a pearl handle pistol, shoved it into his mouth and said, Patch me up, you lily-livered son of a bitch, or I shall return and kick your ass. <laughs> well, this, this hurts. Well, what in God's green pastures a pudgy are you people doing here anyway? We were throwing you an anniversary party. Snappy the Poodle turns 45 today. Yeah, Man. well, yesterday. Shut up! <laughs> there is no Snappy the Poodle. Yes, there is, Tate in the hearts of millions of children. Not anymore. I'm washed up. Through. Tate, we've already talked about this. Well, I'm serious this time. How much more mirth can I sque squeeze out of the rancid corpse of a 45-year-old cartoon poodle? The well's dried up, sister. I'm all out of funny. Hey, can we call an ambulance? <laughs> Shut up. Take your medicine. <laughs> <laughs> you killed him! Don't worry. He'll be all right in the morning. I wish I could say the same thing. Oh, what a headache I'll have. There hasn't been a morning in the last 45 years that I haven't awakened to the jungle drums of Capo Catchy pounding my head. <laughs> I wish I was as strong as the tequila I drink. Ah! Maybe you should stop drinking. But what about the drums? How would I know I'm not dead? Well, you really ruined the party. What? You call this a party? You stick a candle in a bone and you call that a party? What the hell's wrong with you, sister? Now to Lula Bankhead, she could throw a party. Between you and me, she did it son's panties. <laughs> but Tate, I'm not wearing any. Good God, woman, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just help me find my muse and get out. That's what my precious syndicate is paying you for, isn't it? Tate, I help you because I want to. No one wants to help me. 
No one wanted to help me on the tundra when I killed six polar bears with a lace from an old boot. <laughs> sure, the expedition didn't mind using their empty carcasses for shelter, but no one wanted their blood on their hands. But I didn't mind. Uh, I'm sorry, Chief. Are you kicking? <laughs> Claire. Claire? Are you sorry about the time I was captured in godforsaken Uganda by a group of prancing school children who so hated America that they burned the outlines of all 48 states of my back with a hot poker, including each and every capital? Are you kidding? Claire. Are you sorry about the time I was stranded in the Serengeti and had to go monitoring the Lena with a ferocious lion and had to climb down into the Gorongoro crater to reclaim my left butt cheek? <laughs> Are you kidding? Claire. Are you sorry for the time I lost 16 men in a game of human chess to the Sultan of Brunei and escaped by disguising myself as a harem gal and being the Sultan's bitch for six weeks <laughs> <laughs> until I can hop a crater to New Guinea? Will I you kidding? Will I you? Claire. And, um, no, I, I'm sorry that you're quitting. I think Sammy's funny. <laughs> Love in the time of checker. Maggie, this cheese you've made is marvelous. I think I love you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of mine. Now, I'll get the dip out of the oven. Ah, the last of a seven-day process. <laughs> hi, hi, Mitchell. Th thanks a lot for coming. Yeah, so, uh, where is he? He's in the kitchen. He's making... I some dip. ...something. Hello, everyone. Mitchell brought dip. Oh, really? Wonderful. I love dip. <laughs> he sure does. You know, his grandfather invented dip. Yes, yes, he did, but let's eat Mitchell's. Has an expiration date. Mine doesn't. Let's all sit down and get acquainted. Yes, get acquainted. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, yes, don't worry, <laughs> darling. You can sit over here next to me. <laughs> so, how did you do me? Well, we were at... Uh, darling, please, let me tell it. You told it last time. Oops, I forgot. I was giving my 12 steps to a better dip seminar pseudo-posh restaurants when I was spectacularly interrupted by the all-too-familiar commotion of a man choking to death on a piece of overcooked liver. Well, Mitchell, having had three and a half years of medical school before opting out for a career in the arts, I was forced to rise to the occasion, thankfully performing an emergency tracheotomy is a lot like riding a bike. That man was... You finish, honey. My father! Uh, well told, darling. <laughs> now, tell me, how did you two meet? Um, it was, it was at a dino. Well, I'm sure it's just as fascinating in its own little way. <laughs> Go on. Uh, she worked there. I had coffee. Ah, that job you hated. <laughs> Not like your new one. Tell him. We're going to tour Europe. <laughs> I, I'm his assistant. Yes. <laughs> oh, I should get some drinks. Yes. Just a sodi for me. <laughs> sodi man, aim it. <laughs> so, uh, tell me about yourself. Kevin? Well, nothing to tell. 
Three years of constant heroin use, <laughs> followed by two years of drowning in gin. Thank God for the gin. If it weren't for the gin, I'd still be blowing guys in bus stations for heroin. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's horrible. Actually, they were the happiest days of my life. <laughs> that is, uh, until I met, uh, you know, what's her name? Drink getter girl. Shelly, her name is Shelly. Yeah, Shelly, she's an amazing woman. Are you talking about me? I was just telling Mitchell how lucky I am to have found you. Oh, stop. You know, I'm the lucky one. Let's compromise. We're both lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I smell cheese burning. Oh no, my, my old gratin! <laughs> what would she do without me? She'd starve. <laughs> so you, you seem happy, I guess. Yes, I am happy. Really happy for the first time in my life. She's changed every preconceived notion I ever had about myself, about women, about life. You see, I was raised to believe that women hated anal sex. <laughs> Why, the very sound of it drove them into a frightened tizzy. Oh, but not Shelley. She dances to the beat. <laughs> Sadly, she hasn't quite gotten the hang of a blow job, but oh. we've got the rest of our lives to work on that. <laughs> no, with Shelley, it's all about the butt bucket. Oh, no. <laughs> Shelley, butt bucket. Oh, nice. Oh, please. <laughs> Dinner's almost ready. He is quite the whip. What's <laughs> I was just telling Mitchell about our deep sea diving trip. Yes, the diving trip. <laughs> that wasn't funny. I almost died. Well, he told us funny. <laughs> <laughs> really, man, that wasn't an octopus. That was a squid. Uh, Shelly, you may want to stir the hollandaise. We don't want it to break. Thanks, honey. <laughs> Would you look at that caboose? <laughs> but it's not all peaches and cream with us, Mitchell. No, we have our arguments. Why, just the other day, Shelly was undressing right in front of me. I made reference to her melons. She said they're more like cantaloupes. Well, if we had quite the heated discussion. If it weren't for makeup sex, Mitchell, I don't know where we'd be. Yeah, please stop. <laughs> but you look when she returns. I think you'll see it my way. Melons, melons, melons. I am the mayor of Melon City. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I thought I was out of the, I got fired for fucking for three days and nights club. But Shelly and that silky tunnel of hers sucked me right back in. Stop it. <laughs> You know, Mitchell, I used to think my jizz was too good to share. No! <laughs> but I think Shelly's earned it. You should see the wonderful food she's prepared for us. You could say she's laid out quite a spread. Stop it! <laughs> Stop talking about sex! Stop talking about sex! Stop talking about sex! You're talking about someone I care deeply about, even love. <coughs> yes, love. There, I said it. I, I love this woman, and you've taken all almost precious memories, and you've, you've ran it up her ass. Well, so I did. <laughs> Get a load of me. <laughs> Shelly did. <laughs> we got the <to> stupid dip. <laughs> what, what happened? Where's Mitchell going? I guess some people can't let go. And, and who can blame him? You're a rose. <laughs> Fine. Well, got a big day in culinary school tomorrow. Big dip exam. Better go home and prep my dips. Well, uh, good night. No. Yes. Good night. That jerk. <laughs> Tina. Tommy stole my candy. Well, that's okay, Tina. I've got some candy right here in my pocket. <laughs> Why don't you reach on in and grab it? Okay. Oh, a Butterfinger. <laughs> Scene we're going to do is called movie genre change, and here's what's going to happen. 
Uh, Dan and Dave are going to Dan and Dave are going to start a scene based on your suggestion of something too. Uh, wait, what is it? A service or anything? <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever. And uh, they'll do a scene using that, and then at some point I'll freeze them and come back to you for movie genres, something like western, musical, uh, kids' adventure film, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm making things up. I'm making my own genre. And uh, then they will do that scene completely over using that genre. So, shut up. Uh, now we need a service or Priest confessor. Priest. You mean priest and plumber? Or priest and confessor? Priest and sizes and plumber. A couple of Jewish guys. <laughs> Well, uh, Father? Uh, Father? Yes? Um, okay, look, this is my first time in here. Okay. Uh, I'm a convert, and uh, just uh, not quite sure what to do. <sighs> I, gotta, I gotta tell you, that's a relief, because this is my first time here. Oh, yeah? I mean, I'm just like, I'm straight out, I'm brand new, this is my first place, uh -huh. and I had just... <laughs> I tell you what, let's take off this thing here, shall I mean, we? I mean, hey, wow, well, you got more room in there than I do. Well, I'm the, <laughs> the father, let's, let's put that back. You got a spare. Yeah, that's why you're not allowed to see it. Oh, gotcha. Uh, Pepsi? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you got any Coke? Nope. <laughs> well, <clears throat> what can I do for you? Uh, well, what am I supposed wait, to do? Wait, wait, let me guess. Uh, You're here to confess. Right. I knew that part. Right. Because you, you've done... Committed a sin. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. I'm really sorry. Um, that's okay. Well, well do you want to, like... I've seen a lot of Catholic movies. Really? Yeah. So maybe, uh, I tell you what, you try confessing to me. Okay. And and I'll and I'll see how good you are. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. How how about if your first confession is that you're a really shitty priest? Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Father. Yeah. I want to I want to confess that uh, I'm a really shitty priest. Okay. <laughs> uh, ten games of Red Rover. <laughs> <laughs> Sins or something. This like is yeah. easy. Yeah. All right. Yeah, go on. Give me another one. Lay it up. Oh, all right. Uh, uh, Father. Hey, wait, wait. Yeah. Let's try to let's try to confess at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay. Ready? Right, one, don't... two, three. Father, I'm a bad masturbator. <laughs> <laughs> well, my son. Magazine. <laughs> There's already one in here. Oh. <laughs> now it's the last guy, my friend. Oh. No. No. Yeah, well, this is my first one. I wasn't here for the last one. Oh, gotcha. All right, well, try me again. I, I know exactly what I'm doing now. Okay, okay. Yeah, I appreciate your help. I was just, I was really kind of nervous. No, 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 really. It's my, All right. it's my pleasure. Let's have it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't want to do that last one. Do you think I get a break in here anytime? I don't know. It's Phrase! Is it, what do you mean? Is that what you want? <laughs> Phrase, okay, we need a movie genre. Japanese. Pardon me? Japanese. 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 <laughs> well, it kind of kind of leaves it wide open, frankly. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I have a sin to confess. Uh. <laughs> Yesterday in the science patrol, they asked me if I was Ultraman and I said no. But I am. I am Hayata. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, okay, let's do another uh, movie genre. <laughs> Where made romance. <laughs> this is my first time here in the box. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that because it's mine too. <laughs> Look, can we just hold hands while we do this? I'm a priest. <laughs> and I'm a sinner. <laughs> oh 
man, and I am I a sinner. And I will be too. Look, I confess, I'm not very good at this. Look, love means never having to confess. Oh. <laughs> You're right. Let's remove this. I didn't realize this came off so easily. Yes, we, re we removed it again, didn't we? Let's yeah. hold hands, though. <laughs> you know, I never realized how brown your eyes are. Yes, well, you've never seen them. It's always been through the thing. They're big confession box eyes. Aren't they? <laughs> In the dim light, your, shy, your smile shines like the sun. Want to come over to my side? Yeah, it's these caps. Oh. Sure. <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> it's your little sweet potato. <laughs> You're a little sinner. I ain't no saint. I'm going to bring the crucifix in with me. Praise! <laughs> on the good side for the audience member. Okay, we need one more movie genre. Somebody's black exploitation. Pardon me? 70s blaxploitation. Oh, yeah. 70s Woo! blaxploitation. One that, by the way, no one be offended because you said blaxploitation. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> Second, I got work my throat. <laughs> Dang, so <sugar. laughs> Suck! Ooh, right back at you. <laughs> you know, that white priest is out. Ooh, just a second, I got my bell bottoms caught in the door. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I gotta, I gotta confess a sin. Yeah? Father. Lay it on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was... Bitch slapping my bitch. <laughs> but that's not my sin. Because <laughs> the bitch had it coming to her. <laughs> Bam! Shut up, bitch! <laughs> Give it to your mama, too. <laughs> Can you work at the car wash? Are you talking about the car wash? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, <do. laughs> I hear something. <laughs> So, uh... Oh, it's got a radio here in my throat. There it is. Shane! That's Remy Johnson. Chop in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Who's running this freak show? If you're looking for steak daddy, he's in tent number three. Much obliged, chicken wing. <laughs> you must be steak daddy. <coughs> Maybe. Mayhaps not be. Pins who's doing the asking. I'm Jimmy O'Reilly Jr. You know me, Da? The Irish tenor? That's right. I remember your daddy. He was a good singer. He was good at lots of things. Real fine cut of meat. Well, your daddy is on his way to making himself a fine butcher. But being born the way he was, with his brains outside his head at all, well, I knew he'd make me more money than old Johnny Two Tuck. And he did. He sure did. <laughs> Have a seat, boy. So tell me, <coughs> how was your daddy? I guess you didn't hear. He died a little over a year ago. He wanted me to give you this. He died, huh? I knew it happened someday. <laughs> Dear State Daddy, if you're reading this, I know it passed on. That means Jimmy's probably sitting in front of you with a big side of beef for us to return to you. New York's a long way away, State Daddy. A man gets hungry. <laughs> Chip off the old <clears throat> You haven't seen Jimmy since he was knee-high to a tadpole. You know, the real small tadpoles, the kind of greenish ones with no eyes. <laughs> yeah, I remember. 
<laughs> you know, I'm sending Jimmy to you. Hoping you can show me a way that's side of beef and a sharp blade. He's a smart boy. Boy with my hands and his mother's brains. Take good care of him, Steak Daddy. Love and kisses. Jimmy O. Your daddy was a good man, a veritable gold mine. I'll be the freakish one. Let me see your hands, boy. You got a good set of hands on you. Real steady like. Oh, yeah. well, they even taste like me cut of hands. Oh. Well, I bet you can write your name cursive in a pump butt. And make it legible. <laughs> that is, if you was taught by the right steak, Daddy. Maybe. Perhaps not be. You learn fast. I like that. I like that a lot. I like that. Real good. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, steak daddy. <coughs> By the way, who's the wee lass in the photo? That's my little girl, Annette. She turns 16 tomorrow. Well, if anyone ever touched her, they'd find themselves a new line of work. What do you mean, steak daddy? As a star act in my freak show. <laughs> Turkey? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just like your old daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you aren't stopping us, stick daddy. Your little girl Annette and I are walking today. But where are you going to go, Jimmy? Back to your daddy? And those freakish brains of his? Well, you can't. He's dead. And he ain't never coming by it. Take it back, you fat bag of meat. No! Hey! Oh, stay daddy, I'm begging you, stop. Stay up, Annette. This fight's between me and Potato Boy. <laughs> all right. You want to play it that way? Fine. I know all about you and Dodd, Monte Carlo, and those ill winds that blew your ship to that port. What are you talking about, Steak Daddy? Uh, don't you go worrying your pretty little tenderloin hot nun, baby. <laughs> you just talking gristle? Gristle, eh? Hey? <laughs> oh, I know, Steak Daddy. Yes, Steak Daddy. I know about it all. Oh, yeah? Well, I think you're bluffing. There ain't no meat on that bone. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> what a chew on this. <laughs> Steak Daddy. <laughs> I know that pretty young thing that caught your eye. It was a bet you made to win it. I was looking for her folks laughing at you, screaming. When are you going to find your brain sandwich this time in H? But you knew where, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, had nice up your sleeve, didn't you? So you cut out to where me dog was sleeping in the gutter, his brains exposed to the night. And you did it. But you had to go them one better. You took the whole thing when all you needed was a slice! <laughs> he was never the same after that. You bastard! You're just talking gristle, Jimmy. <laughs> tell him, Steak Daddy, tell him it ain't true. Strange what a pretty young thing can do to a Steak Daddy. Say it ain't so! The crazy things he can be driven to! Say it ain't so! Now wait just a minute. Be pretty good judging your Steak Daddy. That pretty young thing? Well, it was your mama. <laughs> That's disgusting, Stick Daddy. Oh, Jimmy, the truth can be pretty disgusting sometimes. You'll find it out if you steal my little girl long enough. Come along, Annette. We're leaving this child right out of hell. That's right. That's right, Stick Daddy. I thought you was grade A Chuck, but you're nothing but a can of spam. Oh. Stop! <laughs> Nobody slapped my baby with a piece of meat except me! <laughs> Stop it, please! Put down that rib, boy! After all we've been through, son! Put it down! I'll put it down! Yeah, I'll put it down! No! Oh, stay daddy, no! That was for me, da. <laughs> What's so funny? Stick, daddy. You did it, boy. You did it all right. Just like I knew you would. You killed your steak, daddy. Just like I killed my steak, daddy, before me. You see what I'm saying? Do you, boy? You're the steak, daddy, now. You're the steak, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, steak, daddy. No. 
No, it cannot be Annette. Get away from me. You, you, stay lady! No, no, Annette! No! Okay, now we have another improv scene for you. This one is called Wild Car. Okay. Uh, hey, hey. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. This features everybody in the group, um, but we're going to start off with Wendy and Doug since they're on stage first. And uh, what we need from you is what do I need? Location. a location. Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Okay. Basically, what's going to happen is Wendy and Doug are going to start a scene, and everybody in the group is going to enter and exit at random, and we'll just find out what happens. So, wild card in Las Vegas. Come on. Come on. Baby ne needs a... Is that helping? <laughs> <laughs> wrong, wrong time to ask that. <laughs> Come on. Baby needs a brand new pair of shoes. Yeah, so do I. Snake guys. So do I. You had to say, so do I. You've got a thousand pairs of shoes. Listen, I know that you think I need one more pair of black shoes. I, listen, I got the pumps, I got the boots, I got the flats, I got the mules. Uh, I mean, I got it, but right, I Right, okay. Uh, here, you roll. You say your little thing, and I'll screw you up. <laughs> <laughs> Quit it! I'm heating them up for you. I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. Like, you're gonna roll or what? Baby needs a new pair of <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Well, we're gonna get in the snake eyes. <laughs> Are you gonna roll or what? Because baby needs a new jar of honey. <laughs> Joe, Joe Pesci is putting someone's head in a vice. Cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> You're no luck to me anymore. I'm going Pesci boy. <laughs> Pesci boy? I thought you were a Pesci boy. <laughs> no, I'm Pesto boy. <laughs> I've got a message for Pesto boy. Are you Pesto boy? <laughs> Pesto boy? You're Pesto boy? Yes. You don't look like Pesto boy. Well, I am. Let's see some identification. <laughs> All right. Here's my license. Pesto boy. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, here's your message. Looks like the inside of a fortune cookie. I'm sorry. I can't read it. I drooled a little bit. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what it said. <laughs> All right. As soon as I can remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the table's fixed. Good. It's time to roll. No, I think... No, no, no. It's fixed against you. You're going to lose. Oh. It's rigged. Oh, great. Wait, what if they mean it's really fixed? Like it's now working. Did they say it was broken before? Well, it didn't, but it could have been. Why don't they make these things more specific? Maybe it was broken and now it's fixed. <laughs> right. Well, the table's fixed. All right, go to it. <laughs> <laughs> you spit it in. honey? <laughs> <laughs> it was honey. I'm just getting honey again when I get, you know. Oh. Well, here. <laughs> on me! <laughs> Come on, money for honey! Money for honey! Money for honey! Money! Oh, oh boy. Fixed, fixed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's rigged. You know what this he needs is a clever line. Yes. It's <laughs> 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 so a bad, bad scene that needs a clever line. Chips, anyone? Hey! <laughs> 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 Dan and Dave. <laughs> hey, Dave. Yeah, Dan. No, no, anything is great. 
What's that, Dan? Well, like in in cartoons, when you bash someone over the head with a club, it's like their head just like wobbles right back into shape. You know, I I wish life were like that. <coughs> Why is that, Dan? Because you think it could grant you some sort of inner peace? No, because it really hurt when you bash me in the head with that club. <laughs> yeah, I bet it did at that. <laughs> <laughs> Dead Dave. Dave, do you think we'll always be best friends? Dad, I've been meaning to tell you I'm sleeping with your girlfriend. <laughs> I, I guess not then. <laughs> nah, I wouldn't count on it. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, eating's one of the last earthly pleasures I'll enjoy. I don't think so. <laughs> don't tempt me. Woo. <laughs> Jesus, man, I don't think you should be doing this. What do you mean? You're bogarting. No, uh, sorry. I mean, you're the son of God. You should be saying a good example for all little children. Now I resent that. I'm sick and tired of everyone holding me to the high standards of an impossible standard set by my father. I'm 32 years old and I still don't have my own identity. No one ever calls me Jesus without adding synagogue to it. it. Makes me so angry I could turn over a temple. I know what you mean. <laughs> Every place I go, they call me son of Zebedee. Yeah, and I'm never Peter. I'm always the rock. <laughs> Not for long. He'll deny me at least three times before the cock crows. No way. Yes way. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Get out of now. <laughs> Show off. Um. <laughs> you know, ever since I can remember, everyone's called me traitor to mankind. I wonder why, Judas. Do you know something I don't know? I know something that you know that you didn't know that I knew. But I know. And now you know I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's working. <laughs> hey! Let's try some of my Galilee trip weed. That's scary, and you've been holding out on us. I just got 30 shekels. How? I sold out Jesus. What? <laughs> cold out, Jesus. <laughs> barely, barely, I say to you, this is some bad shit. Here, I'll heal it. Woo. All better. <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. King of kings. <laughs> it's a miracle. Jesus has healed the withered weed. Did I hear someone mention Jesus? Oh, God, it's your mom. Put it out. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Peter. Hello, John. Hello, Trader. What? <laughs> How was supper? Oh, it was righteous. <laughs> I see you boys are having a little party. Where are the other disciples? They're all straight, Mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> this is a nice send off for Jesus. Oh, are you going somewhere, Jesus? Didn't you hear? He's going on a little trip. Huh? Here's your shrooms, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. A trip. Now I get it. <laughs> you dress warm and don't stay up too late. You know how your father gets. Great. I just washed my ass. Your donkey? <laughs> no. <laughs> Good night, mother. <laughs> you know, I hear that when you take that shit, you can see God. Great. Hey, shotgun Jesus? Oh, sure. <laughs> okay, the final improvisational scene we're going to do. It's Not called real. It's called uh, it's called freeze. Here's what's going to happen. Uh, Jamie and uh, Wendy. <laughs> Yes, it's choose your partner now. Plan way in advance. <laughs> and uh, here's what will happen. We'll get something that two people can do in public without being arrested and or embarrassed. Uh, Jamie and Wendy will start a scene using this suggestion. And at some point, one of us will yell, Freeze! Freeze! We will come in. One of us will come in, assume one of their exact positions, and start a completely different scene. Okay? So now we just need something that two people can do in public without being arrested and or embarrassed. Dancing. Clean the lint out of their toes. <laughs> Dancing. <laughs> we, we don't like feeding Brenda. What's wrong with you? Why do we have to do this? 
kind of, why can't we do something funky fresh and get down and hit? Well, what do you think square dancing is? Do see dough or some shit like that? Come on, let's just do it. Do see dough is very street. Do see dough. Okay, okay. Well, let's just do it then. And... Phrase. <laughs> dancing in the mud. <laughs> no, I haven't been soaking in palm olive. Why? Phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Half the audience is going to get this. Who love? <laughs> I'm still upset about the Carlos thing, but I will accept your proposal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Carlos's fingers are twice as long as yours. <laughs> it's just an observation. Forget about it. Forget about it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to marry you. Freeze. I'm doing the wacky position. <laughs> I know. So this is your brain or your spine? Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> You just keep on digging there, clown boy, because Hamlet's got to be there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Who was this? Yorick, you said? Whoop, 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 whoop. Freeze. Sure, that looks like a dog. Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's a clock. If you pull, if you pull the bow tight, it chews on water. No way. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know what's really funny? That's not water. <laughs> Bullseye. It's Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Kool-Aid. Oh. <laughs> well, this is the oddest cuckoo clock I've seen in a while. Let's just smash it. I didn't say, I wouldn't, you know. I know, you didn't say you make a drink here right now. Freeze. Oh, for God's sakes. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Go on, you that? Yeah, well, okay. Here's your precious Carlos. <laughs> Carlos, because he's so long. <laughs> <laughs> I found him under the couch. Yes. Again. Here's your goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think you the cracker. <laughs> Henry. Put your hands up. <laughs> Alright, I filled your loving cup. Now what do I get? Well now you get a choice of any of these fluffy prizes up here. Teddy bear? Yeah, sure. Alright. Oh, oh that worries. Oh. Uh. <laughs> there is almost something. I finally gave it a lean dude. Sorry. Soon you'll be able to do this by yourself. Open up your other eye. Okay, one more. <laughs> do I look like Michael Jackson in Thriller? <laughs> <laughs> you sure do. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything. Well, you don't have to see, you just have to feel. Oh, good. Yeah. All right, whoa! whoa. <laughs> Hang on, I'll tell you what, let me make a little adjustment. Freeze. Oh, look at the Lilliputians. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I pet one? Oh, man. Right. Okay. I win. Okay, fine. Here. Oh, a happiest cigarette. Uh -huh. Well, that's what we were playing for. 
Well, I'll keep the million dollars. You get the half you cigarette. All right. You. <laughs> you're only pantomiming. <laughs> oh, you're right about that. You're still <laughs> Turn around, I'm gonna fuck you on stage! You guys are gonna get fucked on stage! Freeze! Okay, what are you doing? Yeah, do it back! Hey, why don't you grab my neck again, Cole? <laughs> Instead of giving you a prosthetic arm, yeah. I've grabbed myself onto you. Of course, I'll get you my arms. But you still have year one! Freeze! <laughs> Well, the good news is I have stopped the bleeding like I said I could. Right. The bad news is if I move, you'll die. <laughs> Take well, off. Somebody's going to have to drive this bus. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a really big car. <laughs> okay, I'll take the brake off. Freeze. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is I've stopped the bleeding. <laughs> what do you mean you've got yourself onto me? <laughs> the bad news is you're going to have to fly this plane. Hey, what do you know about? <laughs> the movement I need is on my shoulder. Grace, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I am not going to doze the dough with you. You can doze the dough your ass right out of this room. Praise! That's it! Oh, we're done! We're we're next! Thanks for coming out tonight. Everybody, yeah. uh, Jimmy Fainer, James Jimlis, Wendy Oppliger, Elizabeth Bagby, Woo! Dan Gordon, Angel Golden, <laughs> Alan Jimlis on lights for us, Brian Merrick for popcorn on guitar. Myself and you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.